بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله والصحبه أجمعين Dear viewers in Islam This is your host Dr. Suhaib Hassan from London I just want to speak in this program about the parables of the Quran As you know that the Quran is the source of knowledge and from this Quran the Muslims have derived many many branches branches of knowledge which are uh, which have taken their way in the forms of books in the forms of uh, Islamic literature and in different forms among these knowledges we know about the history of the past the ancient people what happened to them when they have uh, adopted the teachings of Islam and when they rejected them. Also, from this Al-Quran, we know about so many things which are going to happen in future. Many of them had come true and others are going to come true, inshaAllah. And then we also read about the oaths of Al-Quran, a knowledge which is known as Aqsam al-Qur'an. A similar knowledge is Amthal al-Qur'an. In Arabic, Amthal is plural. And its singular is Mathal or Mithal. We are concerned in this episode about this knowledge. So let us take first the definition of Mathal itself. Now the words Mathal or Mithal, they are two very close to each other nouns in Arabic. As far as Mithil is concerned, it means something resembling another thing. And this is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Al-Quran, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَسِيرُ Nothing is similar unto him. And he listens and he sees. So, similarity between Allah and someone else is totally negated. That is, uh, what uh, we understand from the word mithl. And in the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِحْتَضَوْا If they believe, as you have believed, then they are guided. So the word mithl means complete resemblance between two things. On the other hand, when we come to the word mithl, it, is, uh, it got two or three meanings. The first one, which we have just said, similarity between two things. So it is used for similarity, but mainly it is used for a picture. You have to draw a picture of one thing, and then you say that this picture resembles the other thing. This is how most of the parables of Al-Quran, they are uh, mentioned in the book and we derive so many lessons from these parables. Another meaning of that word mathal is to describe something. For example, in uh, Surah Muhammad, مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي وَعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ فِيهَا أَنْحَارٌ مِّنْ مَاءٍ غَيْرِ عَاسٍ وَأَنْحَارٌ مِّنْ لَبَنٍ لَمْ يَتَغَيَّرْ طَعْمُ Here the word mathal is used. مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ أَلَّتِي وَعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ What does it mean here? It does not here mean a similitude, but a description. الْوَصْفِ In Arabic it is known as الْوَصْفِ مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ أَلَّتِي وَعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ The description of al-jannah which is promised to al-muttaqeen people, to those people who got the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that there are rivers of, uh, of water which is not corrupted, uh, there are rivers of, of the milk, uh, the, the taste of which is not going to change. And then this description goes on and goes on. So here the word, masalul jannah, that means the description itself. Now the third meaning for this word, that is a piece of admonition. In Arabic it is known as al-ibrah. Someone who has done something bad, then he was punished by God, for example, and uh, Quran declares that this, 
this person and are those people have become a piece of admonition a piece of admonition for example allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about some ancient people faja'alnahum salafan wa mathalan lil akhirin we have made them a precedent and a piece of admonition for those people to come so this is uh, another uh, meaning and in the same way if a person has done something very good and then he becomes a good example for the people who come after him he is also a salaf and an example for example uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about isa alayhi salam in huwa illa abdun an'amna alayhi wa ja'alnahu mathalan li bani israil he is none but a servant of allah on which we have shown our favor and we have made him an example for bani israil for the israelites so this is the second meaning of uh, the same word which is al al mathal or misal so we can understand now that the word misal it is uh, a picture which resembles another picture and uh, so we should have in uh, in this uh, in this example two pictures and we have to take the whole picture in totality so this picture resembles the other picture now when we are going to explain insha allah the different uh, parables of al quran we will come to many many uh, examples of this nature but here we have also to explain about another meaning which we find in uh, surah for example an nahl wa lillahi al mathal al a'la for allah is the highest example and also in surah ar rum wa lahu al mathal al a'la fi as samawati wal ard to him to allah belongs the highest example in the heaven in the earth so what is the meaning of mathal here wa lillahi al mathal al a'la for allah is the highest example and we have already said that nothing resembles allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is the meaning in the ayah of surah ar rum wa lahu al mathal al a'la fi as samawati wal ard and to allah belongs the highest example in the heavens and in the earth here the meaning is different what is that meaning the word mathal or misal here means something which has become which has become a famous saying sometime sometimes uh, some parables they become so famous that people just use them and once they use them other people understand what you are saying so here we means a famous saying a famous saying for example in arabic it is very common to say if someone has done something bad and then he was punished in a bad way we say kama tadinu tudanu as you have done similar thing is going to be done to you or tit for tat so this is uh, a famous saying now it is uh, uh, no more to be used uh, as a as a parable but just as a famous saying in the same way uh, there is another saying in al balaa muwakkalun bil mantiqi most of the sufferings comes from the speech which means that when a person speaks nonsense for example or slanders someone or he speaks ill about someone then he is attracting lot of uh, criticism adversity and sufferings for himself as long as you are quiet you are not speaking you are saved nobody is going to blame you but once you start blaming other people once you start slandering other people once you start saying ills of other people and then and only then you uh, you are targeted by the other people and uh, in this way lot of criticism could be directed against you so here when we say walillahi al mathal al a'la to allah belongs the highest example what we are saying that to allah belongs a anything any saying which is the highest any actions which could be described as the most noblest action the most highest action 
This what it means, for example, among the sayings. What is the highest saying? The highest saying is the saying of Tawheed. When you say La ilaha illallah, there is none to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the highest saying. And this is what uh, we mean by saying وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْآلَىٰ And to Allah belongs the highest example, means the highest saying, including the saying of La ilaha illallah, including all uh, the noblest action which comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let us take the third word in this regard and that is verbal muscle. وَذَرَبْنَا لَكُمُ الْأَمْثَالِ And we have kind for you many similitudes. ذُرِبَ مَسَلٌ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ A parable has been kind, so listen to it. Now ذَرْبُ الْأَمْثَالِ That is uh, that what it means that uh, a similitude is coined. A similitude is given. This is how the word ذَرْبُ الْأَمْثَالِ normally used in Al-Qur'an. So these are the three different meanings of uh, Al-Masal and insha'Allah when we are going to explain uh, further this subject and uh, we will take many many examples uh, uh, from Al-Qur'an of this nature then this is going to be to be uh, very imminent and uh, more understandable. But one thing what is the benefit? What is the benefit of, of this knowledge? The benefit of this knowledge is very enormous. Imam Asyuti in his book al Khan, he has spoken about so many knowledges of Al-Quran. As I said right from the beginning, that uh, this Quran got so many branches of knowledges. And among them comes this branch, which is the branch of Al-Amthal, Amthal Al-Quran, are the parables of Al-Quran. Because the people, normally they get benefits when they listen something nice. Or when they see that people in the past, they have suffered because of their disobedience, then we can say to them, you are going to face the same situation if you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, this is why we find uh, uh, so many stories of the past mentioned in the book of Allah. And with this, we come to the end of this episode. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.